Hello again, this is David, and today I'm going to start a new series of videos to become professional engineers. I'm starting off with the, the fundamentals of engineering exam. I'll be covering some of the things that I learned as I studied for, prepared for, and ultimately took and passed. So I'll start with a presentation. And what I will be doing is going through some slides, and in those slides I will be covering many of the aspects of the study. It'll be in at least five different parts. So in this first part, I'll be covering the introduction and the examination test center equipment. The agenda shows the currently planned remaining parts. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the series layout. This will be a series dedicated to the fundamental engineering exam. And as I mentioned, it'll be eight topics. I suspect right now there'll be eight different videos. It may expand because some of the actual parts of it may take more than one video. We'll, we'll see as we get to those parts. Each part is planned to be between 10 and 20 minutes in length. I believe that's a good digestible period of time for people to, to watch. In some cases, such as the calculator part, as I mentioned a minute ago, it will more than likely take two videos in order to cover the material. This presentation will be structured as the background for every video in this series. It will be made available to viewers who contribute at the conclusion of the series, and I'll provide additional details on that in the notes section. Links to all websites, material, and tools that I use and or described during this series will actually be provided under each video in the description section. Now there are some series limitations I have to make you aware of. The NCEES examination which I took was the electrical and computer test. Now there are seven of them. However, you will see that a lot of the material is the same. In particular, the math section, the use of the NCEES handbook that they provide during the actual test online, and you'll find that study methods will be exactly the same from one video to the next and from one topic to the next not dependent on the particular test you're taking a significantly more important limitation however is the legalities involved in my divulging actual test or practice questions i have signed and if you take the test you will sign as well an agreement with nces that is the organization that created the test for all 50 states that I will not divulge any actual test questions that I encountered. Also, I will be showing study guides and other sample tests that are provided. I have a separate set of laws I have to worry about in those cases, so I will not be able to show you the actual questions from any of those materials. If, however, I were to come up with my own questions on a particular topic, representative of the material that's important, then obviously, since I created that question, I can show it to you. Let's start with an introduction to the PE licensing requirement. That's what the FE exam is. It is one of the requirements. You will need to complete the following prior to becoming a professional engineer, PE, in the state in which you do business or live. Some number of educational or experience credits, as defined by the state, you have to meet that first. Well, actually, it's sort of threaded throughout. Depending on what your undergraduate degree is, you may be allowed to take the FE exam before meeting any of the experience credits. And in other cases, you may not. You'll have to complete some experience before they will actually let you take that test. And of course, passing the fundamentals of engineering exam. And then you will also have to pass a separate test, which normally you take a regular individual who completes their undergraduate degree in engineering it would take them anywhere between four to five years before they're ready to sit for that second test. There are also, even after you've passed, there are other state licensing checks that are done. For example, uh, you better not have any issues with your background. And that includes things with your driver's license. New York actually required that you can't be within six months of your driver's license expiring, for example. They would make you renew it early. And there are several other types of requirements that each state 
decides on their own. And there are also some license performance history. What that means is, let's say you had another license, a license in some other area. If you've had complaints filed against you on that license, they could hold up this license until they get a good explanation of what has happened with that, especially if you've been revoked. Where to start? This is the licensing process I'm talking about. You start with your state licensing agency. Nearly all provide a website where you can go and get all the information you need and the application forms in order to start the process. And then you would follow that up with the NCEES website. Go on to that site. And what I'm showing right now is the NCEES website. Create an account. They are self-registering accounts. And take a look at what they have to offer. There are a lot of informational material, including the handbook for the FE exam, which I suggest, since they do provide a way to download a PDF of it, that you immediately do that. If you like looking at it in PDF format, which is probably not a bad thing to do anyway, because that's how you're going to see it during the test, then just keep it on your computer and study through it on the computer. I found that I studied through the your test material as I, as I covered a particular topic and I would have the PDF up on the screen of my computer and I would be able to scroll through that document to look for the formulas which is mostly what's in there that you need to answer a particular test question but don't get it wrong just because they give you the formulas does not mean that you'll be able to solve the problem that easily I actually think in some cases that it makes the test a little bit harder I found that I would print it out though because there's a lot of sections in there that just need reading things on the ethics for example and the licensing requirements there's whole sections in that and there are test questions potentially on that material believe me so I would find that I would read through it at my leisure when I when I could by having that book in a hard copy format just print it out punch three holes in it and put it into a small one inch binder and that's good enough here's what I did the actual bound version that I created that I studied with. As you notice, I did mine with a spiral bound, which I found was easier to deal with. And I put a clear plastic cover on the front and a, uh, a black cover on the back. This was actually done for me by one of the office automation centers. It didn't cost much. It only cost like $5 for them to bind it up for me. They punched the holes too. Then you're going to need the experience and education. Now the experience in education is something you have to start looking at right away and that differs from state to state. This may take several years, I estimate five years for a lot of people, maybe even most, to complete after they've completed their bachelor's degree in engineering. And this doesn't have to be just engineering as you'll see when you look at your state requirements, it could be engineering technology as well, which is the path that I took needed a few more years of experience because I didn't have what they considered to be a full engineering degree. The New York example to this, let me just click on that and open it up for you and you can see the web page for New York State. They're not all similar topics that they'll cover you, talking about the next test, showing you forms, possibly download and print out. In some cases, some states, I know Pennsylvania, you can fill out the forms right online. I'm going for a Pennsylvania license as well. I do not have to retake the test. I'll talk about that towards the end of the series, how you can get multi-state licensing. The NCEES is very helpful with that. One thing that I should point out, and it's right there on that first page of the New York webpage, toward the bottom, the next to the last table they have there, and I've replicated it here on the slide, is the details about what you have to do for the experience. So for example, if you go down the rows and you pick out a bachelor in engineering technology, so I had that, I had the second one on the list, shows an engineering technology degree. And it says in the next column, where is that particular degree certified? Now, if it's certified by ABET, let me go and show you how to get to that website and you could actually look up your school and also look up your degree. I won't spend too much time here, but remember that remember this particular link, www.abet.org. 
you can see whether or not your particular degree is or will be certified um, by ABET. If it's certified by ABET, that's a step ahead because then you automatically get additional credits for that degree. So in my case, my engineering technology degree was certified by ABET. Therefore, I got six credits for that bachelor's degree. If I had taken a full engineering degree at the same school, I would have gotten eight. I did not need the work experience credits in order to take the fundamentals exam, the FE exam. You see the zero there for my degree and the one above, and then as you start going further down the list, you see some of them have a non-zero value. The non-zero values in that column tell you that I would not be allowed to have sat for the FE exam until I've completed that many years of experience in engineering. It's great if you have a zero there, believe me. And then the final column all the way to the right is the actual work experience you need to reach the total. And the total, as I listed at the bottom on the right-hand side there, you need 12 credits in total for New York State. Again, states differ. So in my case, I needed six from my education, which I got. That's what my degree automatically gave me by being ABET certified. And I needed to then work as an engineer for six more years. One thing about New York, and this is something that's not necessarily true for all states, sort of one of the uh, legends around the PE license, you don't always need a PE to certify your experience. They prefer having your direct manager in New York certified that accomplish that experience. They will actually put through put you through some extra hoops if you just go out and find a PE that you worked with because they will really question that more than your direct manager who does not have a PE. That's one lesson learned for everybody out there, especially for states like New York. One other thing that's not on here, and I didn't see it on the latest one, so I didn't uh, put it down on the slide, is they used to, New York, and some other states may still do this, if you have a master's degree in an applicable field to your engineering work. For example, I have a master's degree at the time when I was doing this in computer science. And I was applying for computer engineering. If you have a master's degree in some states, it may still be New York as well, but not for long, I heard, then they will give you one year of additional credit. So in actuality, I didn't need the six years even. All I needed was five post-educational experience in order to sit for the PE exam. Anyway, I just wanted to explain that the FE is directly tied to this, the FE exam that is, and that uh, it is an integral part of becoming a professional engineer. You have a title once you pass the FE exam, and there's one of two titles to choose from depending on your state. One is called an EIT, Engineer in Training, or another title that New York supports, and they can actually give you a certificate for it if you go through another application process and another fee, of course. It's called a apprentice engineer. I didn't bother doing that. I immediately went and moved on to the PE uh, exam study. But in some cases, uh, it may take you longer than even the five years calendar-wise to get the experience you needed. You may want to get that interim title sometimes that will help with a job application. Back to the application process. As I said earlier, some states allow an online application, others require paper. All states require inclusion of some fee, which cover the initial application, and usually it also includes the first term as a licensed engineer. Now, most states, I haven't checked them all, they are three-year terms. So you are licensed. You have an active license as a professional engineer for three years. Now, in New York, don't renew it. Does not mean you're not a professional engineer. You can still use that title. You can use a title engineer, which is a key thing that the New York law goes into on this as well. You can't use the term engineer until you actually have been a licensed professional engineer. But if you are not registered, which is what that three-year term is for, it's a registration cycle. If you let that registration lapse and you don't renew it, then you, can, you cannot certify any engineering documents or projects. Basically, you can't use your seal. 
which you're entitled to use only while you're registered but you can put on your business card and you can use in your resume uh, the title of professional engineer then later on if you decide to re-register in New York then you would have to demonstrate to them that you have met continuing education credits to renew your registration which is what they ask you to do every three years except for in New York the first three years they assume that you've passed all the tests at that point and you get the first three years as sort of a free ride without having to worry about these continuing education credits to re-register sort of up in the air how some states deal with that a lot of them uh, do it by uh, telling you just to retain your records others will will tell you you need to do more by submitting proof of each CPE that you've earned but that, that's a constantly evolving process that I won't go into too much also the fee will vary depending on the complexity of your particular application for example do you need that pre-evaluation for the FE exam or not there's an extra fee for that if you were to do it as a separate application and I won't go into the details of that because I believe that's limited to the way New York does it now the FE examination as of 2019 when I'm doing this video seven unique FE examinations are administered they are entirely computer-based examinations the Pearson view centers is the facility that NCEES uses in order to administer those computer-based tests each test is 110 multiple choice and graphical selection questions multiple choice you have four choices A B C D you click on the little bubble on the screen and you move on to the next question when you are sure you have the answer be aware though they actually have figured out most of those answer choices with known errors of computation so it's very possible that you think you came up with the right calculation and you see your answer among those four choices however it's the wrong one because that's one of the ones where you made that common mathematical mistake picking the wrong formula is a biggie however amongst the 110 there's only 100 that I understand that they count towards the final score the other 10 are samples that they're trying to evaluate they constantly try to cycle new questions into the test and they first do an, a statistical analysis on the people that answer those and they know how you did on the test overall and they match you up statistically against other people which your same level and then they see whether or not you got those sample questions right or wrong and that helps them determine uh, whether or not they have to change it or it's acceptable as in they can cycle it into the database or if they may have to get rid of it because it's a totally bogus question that everybody got it right or everybody got it wrong for example the extremes the test is five hours and 20 minutes in total 320 minutes from start to end that's the total test time to answer all 110 questions so do the math it's 2.90909 minutes per question they divide that into two parts however and they don't break it evenly between 110 for it depends on the test and I also understand they recycle the test every quarter to a different uh, set of questions that's why they won't let you take the test more than once in the given quarter at least that's the current NCES rules in between the two parts though they give you up to a 25 minute break you can click right through it and start right into part two if you want and all of the answers that you've submitted for part one are locked you can't go back to the answers you provided for part one whatever you answer there that's it they're done 